is Daniel McCutcheon, and a ground ball to third, breaking for the plate, the throw, and they got him. No! He called him safe! He called him safe! Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. Although many MLB fans, including myself, constantly complain about umpires and their inconsistency, the truth is most games are not won or lost by poor officiating. However, there have been a handful of horrible calls that occurred in huge moments that almost certainly changed the outcome of important games and series. Today we're going to count down the 10 worst umpire blunders in MLB history. Calls that happened on a huge stage in gigantic moments. Calls that umpires absolutely had to get right, but somehow completely blew. This countdown is not about the most egregious calls per se, such as Angel Hernandez saying that this wasn't a home run and then doubling down on that call. After reviewing it himself, this countdown is about calls that happened in critical moments changing the course of baseball history. And we'll start at number 10. Mr. October finds a way. It was game four of the 1978 World Series between the Dodgers and Yankees. The Dodgers were looking good, up in the series 2-1 and leading the game itself 3-1 in the bottom of the sixth. However, the Yankees had a bit of a rally going, with Thurman Munson on second and Reggie Jackson at first. Lou Pinella hit a hot shot to shortstop, where Bill Russell knocked it down, then tagged second base to start what looked to be an inning-ending double play. Reggie Jackson, who was running from first to second, stuck out his hip, interfering with the ball, knocking it off its trajectory to prevent the double play. The ball gets away, the run scores, and I'm screaming for an interference call. He's got it away in the middle. He's got it away. Right there. He's got it away in the middle. He's got it away. Shockingly, umpire Frank Pulley did not call interference, and Thurman Munson was allowed to score. From there, the Dodgers never recovered from the blown call, went on to lose the game and the World Series. The interference issue with Reggie Jackson was the one that pulled the rug right out from under us, and that's still my biggest nightmare in baseball, Dodgers third baseman Ron Say told MLB.com in 2007. The next day we were flat, deflated, and so I feel legitimately that 78 was the one that got away, and it's still hard to talk about. Number nine, a sticky situation. No umpire blunder list would be complete without the classic pine tar incident. It was July 24th, 1983, and George Brett came to the plate with the Royals down by one in the top of the ninth inning with two outs and one runner on base. He smashed a home run, giving the Royals the lead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's gone. Then Yankees manager Billy Martin went out and complained to the umpires, that George Brett's pine tar was too high on the bat, therefore the home run shouldn't count. Incredibly, the umpires agreed. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, he is. He's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look at, look at this. Brett is out. To make this call after the home run had been hit and take away a home run of that magnitude because of pine tar is absolutely insane. And the American League did eventually overturn the call saying that the intent of the rule has nothing to do with affecting a home run and that the call has to be made before the at-bat anyway, not afterwards. The rule is actually so pine tar wouldn't get on the baseball. The ending of the game was replayed, the Royals won, and the call didn't affect wins or losses, but it is still a historic blown call that did prevent future managers from ever again trying to get a home run reversed on the account of pine tar. Number eight. It's foul because he said so. It was October 9th, 2009, Game 2 of the American League Division Series. The Twins were holding their own against the Yankees, tied up in the 11th inning. A Twins victory would tie the series up, with the series moving to Minnesota for Game 3. Joe Maurer led off the bottom of the 11th and drove a line drive down the left field line. It ticked off Melky Cabrera's glove and landed in fair territory. Joe Cousy was right there to make the call since this was the playoffs, and umpires were also stationed on each outfield line. Unbelievably, he blew the call. The Twins were denied the winning run in scoring position to start the inning. Instead, Maurer singled, but was stranded at third. And then Mark Teixeira hit a game-winning home run for the Yankees in the bottom of the 11th. 
the Yankees went on to win the ALDS and eventually the World Series. Number seven, yes, no, the game is tied. It was game three of the 1977 NLCS featuring the Dodgers and Phillies. The Phillies were up 5-4 in the ninth, looking to take a 2-0 lead in the series. However, the Dodgers had the tying run at third with two outs. Davey Lopes hit a grounder to third, which bounced off Mike Schmidt towards shortstop Larry Boa. Boa made a phenomenal barehanded play to get the runner at first. Or did he? Boa, a throw! Yes! No! Not in time! This game is tied! Not in time and we have an argument! Bill Freming took the game from the Phillies, and the Dodgers were able to win it on a base hit by Bill Russell. The Dodgers went on to win the series. Replay shows the runner was clearly out, and the Phillies should have gone up 2-0 in the series. Number 6, MLB meets WWE. It was Game 2 of what would turn out to be one of the greatest World Series of all time, the 1991 Fall Classic between the Braves and Twins. In a one-run game, the Braves' Ron Gant ripped a base hit and took a nice turn around first. Twins pitcher Kevin Tappany made a quick throw over, but Gant made it back safely until this happened. And now Gant gets back to first, and he's out! I don't know, Jack. It looked like Herbeck pulled him off the bag. It appeared that Kent Herbeck illegally pulled Gant off the bag. Umpire Drew Cobble, however, saw that Gant's momentum took him past the bag. Here's the replay. Did a professional 26-year-old athlete overrun the bag and fall over? Or did Herbeck help him off a little while applying the tag? You can make the decision, but for me, this was a blown call that may have helped the Twins win the game by one run and go on to win the World Series in seven games. Number five, Eric Gregg's wide zone. On October 12, 1997, the Marlins and Braves played game five of the National League Championship Series. And in this example, Home plate umpire Eric Gregg didn't blow just one call, rather several as his strike zone was insanely wide throughout the night, especially in favor of Marlins pitcher Levon Hernandez. It wasn't simply a matter of hitters needing to expand their zone. These pitches were at least a foot or more off the plate, not a few inches. I'm so damn mad I can't even see right now, Braves third baseman Chipper Jones said. I know I swung at a couple pitches that were a foot outside. I asked Eric if they were strikes and he said yes. I couldn't help but chuckle. Fred McGriff, who took a curveball a foot and a half off the plate to end the game, said you couldn't even hit some of those pitches. Levon Hernandez struck out 15 batters that day, and he wasn't even a strikeout pitcher. The Marlins won this game 2-1 and went on to win the series. Number four, desperate times call for desperate measures. For this blown call, we go all the way back to the 1975 World Series with the Reds taking on the Red Sox. It was the 10th inning, and the Reds' Cesar Geronimo led off the inning with a single. Ed Armbruster pinch hit with the objective of laying down a sack bunt. However, his bunt was weak and only bounced a few inches in front of the plate, giving catcher Carlton Fisk a chance to gun down the lead runner at second. Armbruster decided not to run to first, instead hanging out near the plate, impeding Fisk's throw down to second. Fisk had to maneuver around Armbruster and ended up making an errant throw, and instead, of making the obvious call of interference. Umpire Larry Barnett called the runners safe, even allowing them to advance to second and third. Joe Morgan singled in the winning run and the Reds won the game and eventually the series. Number three, the assist of the game, Jeffrey Mayer. In game one of the 1996 ALCS, the Baltimore Orioles were looking to take down the Yankees in New York. They were hanging on to a one run lead in the bottom of the eighth with nobody on base. That's when Derek Jeter hit a deep fly ball. In right field, Tarasco going back to the track, to the wall. And what happens here? He contends that a fan reaches up and touches it. What is most unbelievable about this blown call is that it was the playoffs and there was a right field umpire who had a clear view of 12-year-old Jeffrey Mayer's glove reaching down onto the field and literally taking the ball directly out of Tony Tarasco's glove. The extra umpires are there because these games are so vital that in a case such as this, the umpires are there to make the correct call. Instead, this call was blown. The Yankees tied the game and went on to win it along with the series. Number two, almost perfect. Even though this next call did not change who won the World Series and it didn't even happen in the playoffs, 
it did take a once in a lifetime moment away from a pitcher who would never get another chance like this again. Armando Galarraga was pitching for the Detroit Tigers on June 2, 2010. He had spent much of the season in AAA and was trying to prove that he belonged in the majors. Galarraga threw eight and two thirds perfect innings and needed one more out to become immortal. Ground ball, right side, Cabrera will cut it off. Galarraga covers, he's out, no, he's safe. He is safe. Why is he safe? Oh, oh my God. goodness, Jim Joyce, no. He had a chance to do something that only had happened 20 times before through nearly 150 years of baseball history. How Jim Joyce blew this call with a perfect angle and view and an understanding of how big this situation was, I will never understand. He was regretful afterwards and both Colorado and Joyce handled the situation with immense class. I can't say I would have been as professional as Galarraga was in that situation. This call clearly and without a doubt took away a perfect game, a one brilliant moment from an otherwise average career. Number one, Don Denkinger blows it. If there was one call in baseball history that cost a team a World Series trophy, this was it. It was game six of the 1985 World Series in Kansas City between the Royals and Cardinals. The cards were up by a run and just three outs away from the ring with nobody on and nobody out in the ninth inning. Jorge Orta hit a routine ground ball to first baseman Jack Clark for what appeared to be the first out of the inning. But appearances can be deceiving. The Cardinals had made the out by a full step and somehow in the ninth inning of the World Series, the umpire blew this call. The Cardinals were affected and without a doubt could not get their minds past the blown call. They were visibly frustrated, started to make mistakes, and ended up losing the game. The next day they still didn't seem over it as the Royals beat up on St. Louis 11-0, taking home the World Series championship. Although the Cardinals can be blamed for not keeping their cool after the blown call, this still has to be number one as it happened on the biggest stage in the ninth inning and it wasn't even a close play. There you have it. For the 10 worst umpire blunders in history, there have been many, many more that I didn't put on this list. Feel free to add them politely in the comments section down below. And fellow Giants fans, I did not forget the Wilmer Flores check swing to end the 2021 season, nor the Rob Drake fiasco to end the 2020 season but I'm trying to be non-biased and I don't think they quite belong in a top 10 of all time list. However, those were certainly frustrating blown calls. Hope that everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for checking out this video and we will talk to you in the next one.